We got a great show for you today. All of our starts of the week, we're getting into the matchups, some news, and of course, we're never not working. Getting you ready for week four. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, like the video, and enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield provides a continuous and visible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. I also want to tell you about Alto IRA, and this is something I just recently learned about. All of us here, we have Coinbase accounts. We've been into this crypto world. And so if you have a Coinbase account, if you have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, if you have any of the cryptocurrencies, which in a lot of ways represent the future of money, check this out. You can trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, and over 60 other cryptocurrencies in a tax-advantaged IRA. That is what Alto IRA does. So you can get into investing in crypto. And you could do it in a tax advantaged way. They are the easy way to get crypto into an IRA. You can trade all you want without any of the tax headaches, and you can create an account in just a few minutes. You can invest with as little as $10, and there are no setup charges. If you're ready to take your investments to the next level and diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches, you can open an Alto crypto IRA with as little as $10. Just go to altoira.com slash footballers that's alto a l t o i r a dot com slash footballers start investing in cryptocurrency today go to alto ira dot com slash footballers welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts andy holloway jason moore and mike wright Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey. Hey. Yes, it is, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, guys, it is. Guys, I got I got something. I got I to gotta get this off my chest. Oh, okay. oh, you're bearing a burden? Pull up a seat. I've man. been holding on to this one for a while. Oh, buddy. I love football. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, I love it so much. The fact that I have to go from, from stupid Tuesday through Wednesday and I don't get a game, those are days of sadness. Well, we're back. And despair, but we are back, baby. Football is back. Tonight we have Jacksonville, Cincinnati. I'm excited. I will, we'll talk about uh, a lot of matchups on today's show. We have starts of the week for fantasy players. We've got Never Not Working. Very excited to get into that discussion. You know, now's the time really to make moves, to go the extra mile, to put your team in a position where you increase your odds at success, not just this week, but throughout the rest of the season. And we're here to help. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow Jason Moore, you can do so at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway over on the Twitter sphere. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, if that is your preferred social network of choice. And you can watch the show, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and uh, you can be notified when Mike goes live every Sunday morning, mm -hmm. right before the games, to kind of be your tilt counselor. He will take you yeah. through uh, a little of his own tilt, and he will go through the most frequently asked questions with Brooksy, his best friend. Yeah, you don't have to feel alone. On Sunday morning, like you're the only one freaking out. No. Yeah. Hold hey, hands, lean. The great news for you is you don't have to do it in front of thousands of people. Mike that, does. That's yeah. that's what I'm here to do. Now, uh, very good news for you, Mike. Your best friend, Brooks, is on a better microphone than he's ever been on. He so was. He was my best those, friend for a day. Let's hear those uh, pipes. hey -o. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that, does. that voice is so rich. Yeah. What is that, Morgan Freeman back there? I'm a new man. Oh. And it's me, Al. <laughs> and Al is here, too. So uh, how are you doing today, Al? I'm great. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. You sound great. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Let's jump in. <laughs> Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, like I said, we got to work a little harder to guarantee success. By the way, I'll never make fun of you again, Al. 
the second you get a verified check mark. But ooh, I don't believe that at all. <laughs> Make it happen, Foot Clan. <laughs> I, we, they can't. We we tried to enlist them for Mike <laughs> a long time ago, and unfortunately, that is the one area the Achilles heel of the Foot Clan is they have no control over the verified check mark. We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so what do we got today in Never Not Working? So on today's show, we're going to be uh, highlighting <clears throat> some players that we think you should trade for uh, right now because they haven't fully unleashed what they should be doing uh, for football and for fantasy football. And this one we're taking a look at specifically at air yards, which if you are new to the idea of, of air yards, it's simply how far does the ball travel in the air? And it's just it's a simple conclusion that if a player is getting a uh, a lot of targets down the field, a lot of air yards, and that if they catch those, it's going to be a big play. It's going to be you know the fifty yarder. It's going to be the the huge touchdown explosion. And some of these guys, because the throw is difficult, it's it's further down the field. It doesn't always work out. Like we were highlighting um, Emmanuel Sanders for the for the last couple of weeks of. Look at but look how they are using him. Look at his average depth of target. It's just they haven't connected just yet. And as soon as that does, big things are going to happen for fantasy football. And boom, Manny Sanders last week was a weak winning type of a player that you could have just grabbed right off your waiver wire and plugged him right in. So here's a couple players that I want to highlight that I think that you could go after because their value is lower than it should be. We'll start with uh, Emmanuel Sanders. His teammate, Stephon Diggs. So, Andy, you just traded for Stephon Diggs. And Jason grimaces because he was kind of backed into a corner where he had to make the trade. Yes. But he's seeing yeah, – I don't like this segment. He's seeing <laughs> ne nearly 36% of, of the team's air yards, and he is second in unrealized air yards, as in he's getting these targets deep down the field. They just have it connected, which Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen were dominant in that, uh, in that part of the game this last year, which is – part of why Stephon Diggs became such a fantasy revolution in the fifth round, which people are like, okay, Devon, or Stephon Diggs, great. I should go try and trade for him. Here's a couple other names that I really think you should be looking at. Devontae Smith, he's seeing 45-plus percent of his team's air yards. It just has not hit. It, it came through on week one, but then weeks two and week three, it's been very disappointing for uh, the rookie. He's third in unrealized air yards. Michael Pittman Jr. of the Indianapolis Colts, while he is crushing, like <clears throat> it's a, it's more of a low key crush that it, what Michael Pittman has done because yeah he had the hundred yard game in week two he's seeing a whole bunch of targets over thirty percent of the Colts targets uh, the past two weeks, <clears throat> but it could be even better for Michael Pittman like they're he's sixth in on in uh, in air yard share and. It could get even better for Pittman moving forward. And here is the guy that I really want to focus on because he is truly the Riddler. He is an enigma of this doesn't make sense. Because, statistically, this does not make sense what is happening to Jacoby Myers of the New England Patriots. He is cruising along in PPR. He has 104 total receptions over the course of his career with zero career touchdowns. That just does not make sense. He, in fact, is seeing like similar air yard usage to his teammate Nelson Aguilar, who's considered to be the deep threat. You're getting the targets over here for Jacoby Myers. You're getting the air yards. It just hasn't come through in a, in a huge way. Still waiting for that first we're, touchdown we're still, in his career. Yeah, we're still waiting for it. But against Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay is giving up everything through the air. You cannot run against the Tampa Bay front. It is it is one of the toughest in the league, and teams simply give up on it. And now you have a situation with Tampa Bay going into New England. Mac Jones is going to be forced to throw a ton in this game because Tom Brady is going to put up points. You, th you think Tom Brady doesn't want to put up as many points as he physically can in this game? And they're going to have to throw. And Jacoby Myers, this could be the moment that we finally see the true fantasy football explosion. And you can get Jacoby Myers for very, very little in a trade. Like I, think I haven't had the courage to play him 
sure. in our dynasty league yet. And then last week was 14 targets for Jacoby Myers. Would you play Myers this week in that narrative uh, against Tampa Bay at home or Cordero Patterson against the Ooh. Washington football team in a flex? I think, man, I think J that Jacoby Myers is just is so much safer. Like where Cordero is a is a running back, he's everything he is doing is through the air, but it's you know six seven targets and he's getting him a handful of carries. While Jacoby Myers is seeing such a massive target share, you know, t uh, on the season he is at twenty five percent, twenty seven percent of the targets this past week against the Saints. And I I do think that this could be the week that Jacoby Myers finally hits the pay dirt, finally gets recognized, and we're, we go into Monday, pun day, and there will be some <clears throat> really clever stuff said about Jacoby <laughs> Myers, and everyone's real happy. So if you're saying if you're going to try and trade for him, you could just you could go over to the other manager and say, uh, I want this Mr. guy. Mr. Manager. And say, oh, you know. That just just throw a, a throw in and just, a deal. You're gonna drop Jacoby Myers anyways from this two for one trade I'm sending you. So just just send Jacoby Myers back. Trojan to horse your way and sneak Jacoby Myers onto your team. I do want to caveat something when I look at this stat about air yards and how I would be judging who to acquire. It does to me like I put it through one more filter. It's unrealized air yards, but it's also the filter of the confidence I have in the quarterback mm -hmm. that is attached to them. One of the reasons Sanders worked out is because my the confidence in, sure. in Josh Allen is tremendous. One of the players with a ton of air yards but a low reception percentage is DJ Chark. I'm not going out to pursue DJ Chark because I don't have confidence that Trevor Lawrence is going to suddenly manifest into a spectacular quarterback where the downfield throws are going to be accurate. I doubt last year a player like A.J. Green with the quarterback roulette he had in Cincinnati, none of us were going to go out and heavily invest on those unrealized air yards. So I, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to make a decision for Devonta Smith. What do you believe about, you know, uh, Jalen Hurts? And so if you are confident enough in him as a quarterback, go pursue that. Same goes for, you know, potentially Pittman. Um, Jacoby Myers, you know, I think we've been impressed for the most part with Mac Jones, not from a fantasy output perspective, but from a competence running the offense perspective. But that's what I would do. I would be looking through that filter. I don't disagree at all. Like this is this is an opportunity for someone who could explode. This is this is probability. Yeah. And I but just, you were saying Stephon Diggs, huh? Yeah, you should probably try and trade low for yeah. Stephon Diggs. He would be the number. <laughs> if you can get Stephon Diggs, you should be pretty happy about that. But fantasy football is all – it's completely a probability-based game, and this is just finding another edge of players that could be primed for a fantasy football explosion. The nice thing about using a, a statistic like unrealized air yards is that you can find it in both great players and affordable options because Diggs is a perfect example, right? He was the wide receiver three last year, and he's been disappointing this year. He's the wide receiver 28. Emmanuel Sanders is on the scene. There's a lot of reason to think, oh, man, maybe he won't bounce back to where he was. And I could tell you, fantasy managers who have Diggs, they're, they're worried. Like, is this the new normal? Right. Well, when you look behind the scenes and you go, wait, but he's first in air yards. Like th this is, it's gonna come. Um, that can give you the confidence to pull the trigger on on a deal like that. All right, get up to one hundred percent dandruff protection that is never not working with Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. You guys mentioned the giveaway we got going on, right? We did. So we're giving away a Darren Waller jersey. Goo goo gajube. Over at footclangiveaway.com. Mm -hmm. Check it so. out. T. Higgins ruled out for the game mm. tonight. Uh, you guys kind of mentioned that there was a very low probability of him being available. It is, it is lowered to zero. Uh, he won't be playing. So, you know, the matchup. Against Jacksonville, there's an opportunity not just for Jamar Chase, who's in the headlines, but you know there's an opportunity for Tyler Boyd to make a contribution on offense tonight. And so uh, pay attention there. If you need a desperation flex, just remember to put that desperation flex into your wide receiver mm -hmm. spot if you're playing them tonight. James White is going to miss the remainder of the season with the hip injury. That stinks. Um, 
I think that that is, we don't know if that's the situation for Fitzpatrick that he's missing the whole year, but it's a possibility, right? Yeah, certainly. It, same, same injury, and it's uh, obviously worse for a running back than, than a quarterback. Daryl Henderson returned to practice running back for the Rams. I love that Sean McVay quote. Uh, his quote was, he had a good look in his eye <laughs> and took part in the walkthrough just now. He had a good look in his eye. So when you go through a walkthrough, the best thing you can do is say it's the look in your eye. His I, spirit looked strong. I looked that man. I looked right into his soul, and it told me he might play football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not 100% sure, but if Henderson is back, is he right back into your fantasy lineup? Yes. He, he is for he, mine. He looked outstanding in his work before the injury. He would be right back in my lineup. Aaron Jones and Jonathan Taylor were limited on Wednesday due to ankle and knee injuries. Nothing to worry about yet. Nope. Dalvin Cook was limited on Wednesday. That is a good sign to me that he mm -hmm. will be back in the fold for the Vikings, who are at home again this week. Tyler Conklin held out due, due to glute and elbow oh, injuries. Oh, man. That glute elbow injury combo. Uh, that dead butt was working on Man. Sunday. Uh, <laughs> How do we not have a sound for the glute injury? It's because just not that common. Have you been to glute index? It's not a safe place. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got to turn your filters off to get turn there. It, yeah, you <laughs> don't do it. And if you're new, if you're newer to fantasy football, um, <laughs> how does that tie into the glutes? <laughs> I'm, I'm going more to all these reports about people missing Wednesday practices. Wednesday is like the general day off take it's, it easy i don't ever raise red flags over someone being limited or or skipping out on a wednesday practice thursday's where it really really matters what about if it's a glute injury though is that well no that's any red flags it's, it's certainly newsworthy um is, is, is this is the first glute injury i know about so i don't it's, this I, must be a glute bruise i do think this is the first time in what are we what show in 1100 shows that we've said glute yeah I, it rolls right off the tongue yeah oh yeah Probably easier to recover from than other injuries, too, I'm guessing. I, I have no idea. If he has a devastating glute injury, I'm going to feel really <laughs> bad about this. Sorry, Tyler. Conk, conk. He's a tight end. I'm sure his glute is fine. Point. Yeah. Super tight. Not tight enough. Uh, George Kittle didn't practice on Wednesday. Expected to play. Elijah Mitchell returned to a limited practice Wednesday. Ooh, if he is... Let's say he's active and Trey Sermon is active. You got the codes? It's Who's the so, guy? It, well, it, it's Elijah Mitchell based on how Trey Sermon looked on the field. However, this is such an uncomfortable, awful weekly experience to try to identify. It, it's like walking through a thorn bush every week. It's mm -hmm. just not – your odds of getting it right seem so low. Yeah, it's but Eli Missel would be the one I'd go through. I, I would, I would agree. I think if they are both back until it, Jeff Wilson's back, right? Until Jeff Wilson is back. But if Jeff. they're both active, which seems reasonable, would you be starting Elijah Mitz Missel over the other San Francisco backs? Well, yes, and in general, would you start him first week back from the injury? I'd flex him. Okay, with terror, with a look in my eye that is full <laughs> of terror. <laughs> Uh, Rob Gronkowski did not practice on Wednesday. Looks likely to play. They're going to let those ribs mm -hmm. uh, heal up. And then Antonio Brown activated from the reserve COVID list. You know, it is a return to a former team for him as well. Oh, another revenge game. Are you? Yeah, for those, what, three weeks he was active? Well, I think um, it was one. Was it only one? Yeah. Okay. But he, he was good. He was. Do you believe uh, that he is flex-worthy immediately? activated from yes. the, the list yes all right gerald everett's on the COVID list yeah oh no that oh. means there's one gigantic tight end left <sighs> now what do you think about it's a big, uh, it's a big boy from montana <laughs> oh it's will disney the big montana himself we're going to disney land <laughs> it's been too long it has Thank it's been you. way too long oh you know what's really, really sad about this? What's that, Jason? You really it, can't play him? Is it ever was looking really good? He was. I guess I should stop this. Yes, thank you. I mean, they're, do you play him? Do you play Will Disley? Do you play Disley? Will Disley? I think he's a great... Against uh, San Francisco? Great DFS dart throw. All right. That, okay. That's the end for that's me. That's fine. But yeah, Gerald Everett was like, the snaps are going up, the targets are going up. 
Everett is interesting moving forward. Curtis Samuel was designated to return from his injured reserve. Okay. That's good news. That means he's eligible to reserve. Right. They have three weeks Step to bring one. him back um, or else he'll spend the season on IR. But you don't designate him if you don't expect him back. So right. hopefully that means his injury is uh, healing well. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. So look, you got a podcast from us every day in the morning, but uh, we don't come popping through with a sound effect. That's true. The way Sleeper does. So uh, download the app. Check it out. And before we get into the fantasy forecast, I want to thank today's sponsor, Public Rec. Fellas, it's it's ridiculous that our sizes change brand to brand. Our bodies, they stay the same. You're a measurement, not a size. You don't have to change shopping for clothes. That's what has to change. Why settle for traditional retail sizes? When like, What does a medium person look like? I, I, I don't know. How can two people wear a medium when they're different heights? Like this is something that hey I hey man I'm right in the middle of that my yeah. belly with some of these shirts I have talked about this like I think my entire life where my size just it never fit into small medium or large and that's where public rec comes in and that's why I'm I'm so excited that you I need the right size yeah that I can recommend public rec because they have over forty different sizing combinations they can fit your body. Uh, it's a better fit. A better fit is the secret to making those comfortable pants look good. Now, your favorite lounge pants can also be your go-to's for work, happy hour, the gym. After a year at home, they are the pants you need now. That you need pants because look, pants are back. You know, uh, Public Rec rarely discounts, but right now they have an exclusive offer just for fantasy footballers listeners. Go to publicrec.com, use the promo code Footballers, and you're going to get ten percent. Off. That's publicrec.com. Use our promo code FOOTBALLERS for 10% off. And Foot Clan, we want to thank DoorDash uh, for so much, uh, mostly for their services uh, because I use them all the time. If you find yourself ordering DoorDash more than twice per month or like me, twice per day, uh, <laughs> you should get signed up for Door for Dash Pass. Dash Pass is the easiest way to spend money. It's to save money. Goodness. <laughs> I'm so excited about uh, about DoorDash here. Well, you can here. spend and save at you the same time. You can spend and save because you know how much those delivery fees can can add up to. Well, if you basically order twice a month, it pays for itself because Dash Pass is a membership that offers unlimited $0 delivery fees from thousands of restaurants, grocery stores, and convenience stores with over 18,000 restaurants eligible for Dash Pass. You may even find a new favorite restaurant or flowers, pet supplies, groceries. You can do it all with with DoorDash. I highly recommend um, just personal DoorDash <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's my recommendation. I have been <laughs> with Dash Pass forever. If you're ready to save money on your DoorDash orders, Dash Pass is uh, offering a free month for Dash Pass right now. Stop spending money on delivery fees. Try Dash Pass from DoorDash today for free. When you've got zero delivery fees, you get, uh, you know, you're free to get more because you can start your free month today. Fantasy forecast. All right, we talked about the Thursday night game on yesterday's show. Well, I didn't. These two gentlemen did. Thank you for holding it down. I've I've heard it was the best Thursday night breakdown that this show's ever had. And to be clear, I was thanking Jake Grizz, not you guys. Well, he's he's very educated for a cardboard bear. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. He's still here? <clears throat> he's in the background. He got a new microphone as well. <laughs> um all right, Washington at one and two taking on the one and two Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Washington minus one in this one. The over-under is 47. And, uh, <laughs> well, what are we going to get in this one? Oh, brother. We've got Matt Ryan as our quarterback 20 on the week. Heineke is the quarterback 17 on the week. And, um, well, that that's kind of wild to have Matt Ryan ranked under Taylor Heineke at home. Because uh, Taylor Heineke is a streaming candidate. He's... Since being the starter, he has been a top 12 quarterback both times. That includes QB9 in Buffalo. He, uh, he slings it out there. He looks for Terry McLaurin, and he has rushing in his arsenal. It's not like 
it doesn't blow you away when he takes off and and uh, runs, but it's like does, Alex Smith used to be. He, he does it from time to time. He had a rushing touchdown this past week, and Atlanta is <sighs> terrible. Yeah, defensively this year, 29th against opposing quarterbacks, 26th against opposing tight ends, 22nd against wideouts. Bad, 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 bad. And amazingly, Washington has been bad. I mean, they are 32nd against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. That's, They're, that's Washington the worst is, in football. Yeah, so bizarre. What I, I don't know what happened. To they're, this want, they're trying defense. to figure it out. Yeah, the the there's an investigation. The personnel on the D line should be great, as seen by last year. Um, but they are not getting through. The pass rush is not uh, causing problems. Uh, you know, I don't expect them to stay the worst out there in football by any means. If especially if you actually put context to that and look at who Washington has had to play against. I mean, when you play against Josh Allen and, and Justin Herbert, those those guys are going to beat you. Uh, Matt Ryan, maybe. I mean, obviously he's been great in his career, but this year, man, he's averaging 235 passing yards a game. This is not the 5,000-yard Matt mm -hmm. Ryan airing it out, tons of yards uh, it would that be we've seen in the past. It would be a lot easier to expect him to return to the mean if there wasn't a change, a couple of significant changes on the offense, which does bring up the Calvin Ridley problem. Through three weeks, he's been the wide receiver 61, 17, and 36. He has not been a wide receiver one yet this year. And, you know, that he's only been a wide receiver two one time. So is it adjustment? Time for Calvin Ridley expectations, how you view him rest of season for your team. Do you expect the team to figure it out between him and Kyle Pitts and Cordero? I mean, those are the three passing game weapons that they have right now, which it's not working out. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think my draft season views on Calvin Ridley have changed, but they changed rather quickly. Uh, you know, the, the airing it out, giant monstrous season, that looked done in week one just because of finally seeing what the scheme is, how they want to run the ball, um, how they're throwing. And it, it doesn't seem like Atlanta wants to really air it out. They are protecting their bad defense, um, you know, on, on the offensive side of the ball, which is probably a, a smart decision coaching-wise, but not great for fantasy. So, yeah, I, I would say that Calvin Ridley is a, uh, you know, he's kind of one of those wide receiver 10 to 15. I, I Back end one wide receiver two I think the rest of the way don't overreact to three games where he's not a quarter a, a wide receiver one because his talent is still there if, could, if you can get the value though for what you drafted him for would you ship him out thinking that this is if, if you believe the expectations have changed would you trade him um yeah I mean if you could get the value of, of would a, you trade of him for Mike Williams guy, oh man Mike Williams no, no. is the, the worst name to bring up in trades because I know I would not trade him for Mike Williams. On the on the flip, I would do I would do the reverse. But maybe I mean it feels crazy right now. Obviously Mike Williams scorching the earth um and we all believe it's legitimate. It's not just a three game sample that's going to go away, about but to do it on Monday night football. Yeah, he very well might. Um but no, I mean if you watch the games Calvin Ridley still looks good. The, I agree with you. The scheme change, the coach change, uh, missing Julio, things have, uh, you know, changed around him, but he's still, I think he's going to have a, a very, very good season the rest he's, of the way. He's still averaged nearly 10 targets a game. Like he's at 29 targets through three weeks. He's he's still seeing a bunch of opportunity. It's not the same opportunity that we, we, can, we were hoping and expecting, but you still should be playing Calvin Ridley. Kyle Pitts has 17 targets through three weeks. Is he just, are you just waiting still for Kyle Pitts to go magma in one of these games? I think he will go magma at, at some point. Is this but, the week? Um, man. I have Atlanta winning this game. I'll just throw that out there. I okay. think they'll win the game at home. Uh, I don't know that it's the week, but I, at, at this point, you are, you're hoping that he becomes the Evan Engram rookie season through three weeks. Cordero Patterson has as many receptions as DeAndre Hopkins and one fewer scrimmage yard than Alvin Kamara. Flexworthy in week number four? Yeah, I mean, because of how much work is coming in the passing game, I do think he's flexworthy even in what appears to not necessarily be the, 
the best matchup um, defense-wise. I, I would throw him in a flex. Gibson is the running back 17 on the year so far. Terry McLaurin, we're going to talk about him later. He's always in your lineup. And Logan Thomas seems very safe to put into your lineup every yes. week. All right, we'll move on. Uh, like I said, we'll talk about McLaurin more later. Houston at 1-2, and two, traveling to Buffalo to take on the Bills at 2-1. and one. DraftKings Sportsbook line. Oh, my gosh. 16 points. The Bills minus 16. Uh, the over-under is 47. I mean, last week the Bills were three-and-a-half-point home favorites against Washington, which I said on the show blew my mind. Like, it made no sense to me. But it was almost as though the sports books were waiting to see what we were waiting to see from Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Well, they saw it, and now they're 16-point home favorites against Houston. We're back in. So, you know, what are the difficult fantasy decisions here? Diggs, Allen, Sanders, Beasley, they're all fine to play. Dawson Knox? Yes. Is he in consideration? He absolutely is in consideration. The Tight end for the Bills? Yeah. Uh, currently, the, the Texans are giving up over 15 points a game to the tight end position and I mean 16 point favorite they're a 16 point favorite and yet uh, with the with the over under the Buffalo Bills have a team implied total of over 31 points you got to get in on this the the, the you're getting the hard, in at running back then that's I the am big question I'm I think that Zach Moss is a is a perfectly fine play he's been a top 20 guy the past two weeks The the touchdown opportunities have been there for him you what will be tough is that cl clearly by the end of the week not everyone on this team will pay off for fantasy football but you know i was just talking about the probability of uh, that is fantasy football and there is a high probability that there is a lot of excitement and a lot of fantasy action for the buffalo side of the football this week against the texans so i want in with all of them, I would take a chance. So when you say all of them, I, I, I think all three of us would put Zach Moss ahead right now in that backfield. If you look at the snaps. I'm not you, counting Devin Singletary. That's, that's what you mean. That is what, no. where I was getting. <laughs> no, no. Would you play There's Devin? barely room for one running back <laughs> sure. on the Buffalo Bills. Um, but the snap counts have gone uh, completely different. You know, that's the arrow up and the arrow down. It just straight up makes an X when it comes to uh, Devin Singletary and – uh, uh, Zach Moss. The Zach Moss missed week one. We thought it was a healthy scratch. It wasn't. They said it was, it was more an unhealthy scratch. because of some unhealthy? injuries. <laughs> the word is unhealthy, dear friend. Yeah. Yeah, tomato, tomato. So, yeah, Zach Moss is the running back uh, to have there. Brandon Cooks and no one else for Houston. Is that, I, a, is that a okay policy here? I, that's Bills, always an okay defense policy. Is so good. It's always an okay policy, and I know he's been back to back to back. We've got the NBA Jam rules. He's been great for three straight weeks. One of only four wide receivers, all in the top twenty-four um, for all three weeks. I don't want to play him this week. I'm fine with it. I think garbage time. There will be lots of it, and Man, he will get plenty of. Bills are just been so dominant. They have. They're only giving up nineteen fantasy points a game to opposing wide receivers. But how is Cooks not fifteen of those nineteen? Yes, uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that. The Lions at 0-3 take on the Chicago Bears at 1-2. and DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Bears minus 3, over-under is 42 points. Andy Dalton did return to practice yesterday. Uh-oh. And um, I have a question in here that I find repugnant. Um, I think Kyle Borgogan wanted to know, he said, would you rather have Guns Mahoney or Matt Nagy as your head coach? This what? is not a... This is an unfair thing for Guns Mahoney. I mean, I would choose Dan Campbell. How dare you? You know... Yeah. Have you seen that guy? Seven days a week. <laughs> he's ripped. He, he's a he's a legitimate head coach that I respect, which I cannot say the same thing about Matthew Nagy. Um, the Lions should have beat the Ravens last week. Let's not forget that. They should have won the game against the Ravens last week. They are competing on a weekly basis. They had a halftime lead against the Packers. Um, before the season, I believed that the Lions would reach seven wins. They have none. <laughs> So maybe they just compete. It's going to be tough now. Maybe they just compete and never win. But I do think they will compete in this one as well. I am not going to go so far as to make them the almost upset. But they're going to almost upset a lot of teams this year. Uh, that being said, their defense statistically gives up a lot of fantasy points. David Montgomery, if there's a week you can feel confident in him, it's this week. And then Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney. I brought it up on these, the Green Room show yesterday. They basically have season-long stat lines that look like a nice game. 
but they have it over three games. So neither player has produced. Mooney has a, had a better season so far, but hasn't scored. I guess just better season by way of receptions and yards. Robinson snuck into the end zone and has more targets. Robinson feels like you have to play him in this matchup. Yeah, I would I would say that. I, w I would say that Robinson is someone you should play. Obviously, it's going to depend on who his quarterback is. I think that we would all agree for for fantasy purposes, Andy Dalton, if he be, if he is the quarterback, would be better for the other pieces, not necessarily outscoring the potential of Justin Fields if they actually use his legs. Um, but there were so many plays. You know, Mike and I were watching a lot of them where it was. I mean, it it was half not his fault because the pass rush was coming through but we also recognize that if Dalton was in there he probably gets rid of that he probably ball takes the first read and, and just takes it yeah. yeah on the other side of the ball DeAndre Swift has 19 receptions he leads the NFL in yards after catch and Dan Campbell said quote you're going to see a lot more of Swift moving forward Ooh, why not I mean he's your best weapon on this offense bar bar none mm-hmm tried to trade Saquon Barkley and another piece for Swift. Wow. Unsuccessful? Unsuccessful. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to let go of him right now. You know, we had uh, one of the managers in our league of record decided to ship out Derrick Henry before the big Derrick Henry week, and it was on the, you know, his remaining running backs were Daryl Henderson and DeAndre Swift, and now it looks like maybe that was worth it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Henry's obviously a stalwart, but if you – I think you can just pencil Swift in safely in your lineup every week. RB1 potential every week. And uh, who knows? This guy could end up the number one running back this year. Say so Swift through three weeks at least, but it currently looks like he will be the absolute best draft at the running back position. You're going to answer this the way I think you will, but with the injury, if you're going to miss Christian McCaffrey for two, three more weeks, would you rather have Swift than McCaffrey rest of the season? Ooh. No, uh, no I, I would not trade Swift. Okay. Um, TJ Hawkinson, last week, somehow only two for 10. Yes, Is that right? Let, he had 10 targets? Just let it go. No, no, no. It was two, two for, for 10, 10 yards. yards. Oh. He played 100% he, snaps. He caught 100% of his targets. Which were two. Yes. Yeah, so it that, was, that, you know. Just throw it away. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that is an area the Bears have been very good against. So you may need to cap your expectations this week. Yeah, I mean, the Bears so so far this year, I I hope it was because of uh, how bad they were last year. I know they were one of our most targeted teams to play the tight end against last year. Um, in the small sample size so far this year, they haven't uh they haven't given up big plays. But I do think Hawkinson is obviously uh, you throw last week away is going to be great full season. This is an over under of forty two points, and I'm I'd be taking the under. The Panthers at three and zero take on the two and one Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. DK Sportsbook has the Cowboys minus four. Over under is fifty and a half points. 50. This game seems primed to give you, I don't know, give you some uh, some action in the fantasy world. This game is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Like this is, a, and not just. I mean, you got a lot of fantasy football pieces, but I'm talking real life NFL. Carolina Panthers, 3-0, one of the best stories heading into the early season. But they have they beat up the Jets. They beat up a Jameis Winston-led New Orleans offense. And then a they took down the General, which... Which was their only road win. I mean, that's a difficult thing to do, take down General Mills in his, his first start here. So are the Carolina Panthers for real? We will get to find out against the Dallas Cowboys. Andy's shaking his head here. And he's... They're He's going, out. Dallas is going to win by two touchdowns. And That's what I think happens in this game. Not only is uh, there a lot to find out about the truth of the Panthers here, but there is a, against the Cowboys as well. The Panthers' offense, offense has been um, doing enough, and the Cowboys' defense looks like it might be fixed. I'm still so skeptical. Yeah, um, we'll so a game of skepticism. On this is a game teams. of skepticism, but excitement. Uh, it'll certainly be the the game I'm probably paying attention to the most in that uh, that morning slate. Zeke Cooper Lamb in your in your lineup. Are you willing to roll the dice with Dalton Schultz this week after the nice week last week? Uh, I mean, the, the it's tough because. When you look at the actual like routes run, it it really it's 
very close to even between Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin. And I'm not saying that it's like I, I'm a Blake Jarwin apologist. The the point is, it could have eased that coin could have landed on Jarwin on certain plays. It's so it, it makes it tougher to go all in on Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz definitely looks like the the better pass catching option. He's just out there a lot more. That's the reason I like him more than Jarwin is that he's on the field for more plays. So it feels like the probability is higher. But maybe you just stay away from the the tight end room in this game against the defense that's been really good so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, would you rather go one of these guys or Dawson Knox? I would play. I'd rather play Dalton Schultz over Dawson. Yeah, yeah, because Dawson's had some flash games before. Like I'm, I'm worried about chasing the Dal Dalton Knox this week. The Dalton, Dalton Knox. Knox. What did I say? Did I combine them? Yeah. You did. I if you can maybe get both, I'm worried I, about playing either one. I would chase him. <laughs> Uh, Tony Pollard, snap counts 24, 34, 38. They are going up. Yeah, and, and his his carries were double digits again. He obviously was um, not the guy. Zeke was the guy last week, but he is someone that you could flex. You talk about Cordero Patterson, his involvement. He's kind of that level to me of, of a flex option. On the other side, Chuba Hubbard will get the start at running back. He will share the work with Royce Freeman. Is 15 touches a given for Chuba, and would you play him over somebody like James Robinson? Uh, yes and probably yes. Yes and yes for me. Um, okay. What about uh, if he's in your flex position? Would you rather have Tyler Boyd tonight or Chuba Hubbard? Chuba. Miles Sanders after the three-touch performance against uh, going up against Man. Kansas City or Chuba? Chuba. Chuba. So we're pretty we're pretty confident in Chuba this week. Uh, and just the way that Matt Rule has talked about how they're going to use utilize him in the offense he's going to be the guy you saw him catching passes last week they, that's that's part of how they they set their game up and and you saw last year um when mike davis had to step up mike davis is not something special uh chuba has more you know straight line juice than than mike davis so uh if, you, if you're not familiar with chuba hubbard track superstar yes um and a couple years ago he was supposed to be like the guy the running back to have and then he came back for another year of college and just completely collapsed became you know a, a an afterthought but he has talent it, this isn't to me like some absolute scrub getting his chance this is a talented player getting a chance 16 opportunities in about half of the snaps last week that included five targets so th I I think you I think you can chase the volume against Dallas and it, while while Andy, you're like you feel confident that Dallas is gonna uh, blow them out. I mean that turns into more targets for Chuba, but there is a world where both teams score a bunch of points. No doubt in this one. So yeah, I'm I'm certainly interested to play Chuba. In that world, do you play Robbie Anderson? Yes. Because the, how do you not play him here if oh, you have man. him on your roster? Yeah, I mean I I do think that this is a fine game for Robbie Anderson with Christian McCaffrey out with Dan Arnold being traded against the Cowboys throwing the ball a lot. Um, it, it, yeah, I mean, if you can't play him here, you can't play him anywhere, and I, I think you're going to be able to play him. They did not pay the amount of money that they paid this man this season um, to just because they think he's bad or he's not a part of the team. Like, he's going to have uh, much more relevance as the season goes on. I I tend to agree. Like, it, it's hard to argue with those things, but meanwhile, Terrace Marshall is just – just creeping up into that that workload. He was he saw five targets this past week. He caught four of them for forty eight yards. Where Robbie was had one catch. I mean, it's we've now seen two of the three games where Robbie Anderson had one reception. One of them was a fifty seven yard uh, house call. But uh, I'm fine his, putting him on the role bench in the this offense week. is is so tough. It, like, even though this is the only game that you're like, hey, if I was ever going to play him, yeah, I think it's okay as a fantasy player too to not drop him, put him on the bench because you've been burned, and then see if this is his return to glory and gives you confidence moving forward. That's probably how you I You don't have to play too. him. Yeah, I mean, it's always going to depend on your other options. Um, but I, I guess in my world, I'm, I'm thinking if I wouldn't play him here. Robbie Anderson or A.J. Green? Robbie Anderson. Okay. Robbie Anderson or Fireball Tim? Tim. Fireball Tim. Tim Patrick. 
Detroit. Is that, is that, is that uh, the same guy as Fireball Jones? <laughs> yes, Fireball Jones, Look, if you Fireball in, Pat, Fireball Tim. If you weren't Tim. in the green room last night, we were trying, we were workshopping, trying to rebrand so people actually know who he is. But Fireball Tim Patrick for the Denver Broncos. There it is. Fireball Jones or Darnell Anderson. <laughs> All right, the Indianapolis Colts at 0-3 take on the No one's going to know who Uh, anybody is that we're talking about. That's fine. (laughs) They don't know what we're talking about anyways. The Colts at 0-3 taking on the Dolphins at 1-2. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is the Dolphins minus two. Don't do it. Don't do it. Andy's almost upset of the week. Andy loves Carson. Andy loves Carson. Tell us about why Carson Wentz is going to win this game. I think they just they they need a win, and the Dolphins. The Dolphins also need a with win with Jacoby. I I think it'll be close. It's a what I don't like is trying to figure out how these fantasy options how how the landscape lays out here in this game, especially on the Miami side, because confidence is difficult. Um, 42 and a half point over under dolphins minus two is what the DK Sportsbook line has. Look, miles Gaskin gets enough targets and involvement that I think, you know, at home, you're going to put him out there. Yeah. He's a solid play, but you know, <laughs> Will Fuller didn't practice, came back, had a couple shots at, you know, I think we're having a conversation about Will Fuller this week. If that deep pass by Jacoby Brissett, just he comes down with it after the return that he had last week, which was solid, not spectacular, but that's what he is, right? He's a deep threat. He is a down-the-field threat. He's not Jalen Wada with 10 catches for 58 yards or whatever he had. 12, 12 catches. For, 12 catches for 58 yards. So, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Like, would, you play, you, would you play Miles Gaskin? with the the disappointment or would you go back to Tyson Williams the Baltimore running back against Denver I would play Miles Gaskin the involvement okay. in the passing game the utilization I think he had 13 carries last week I I would uh I I think Gaskin is a is a fine play because his floor I feel like his floor and ceiling are are near each other but it's it's you know around that that 10 points Uh yeah I'm with you on that one Man, I want to see Tyson emerge again, but yeah. I have more confidence in the workload for Gaskin. Um, he's he's tied with Nick Chubb right now for the most 15-plus yard runs. Yes. So uh, he just hasn't gotten into the end zone. There's, he's one of those players with a lot of work but no touchdowns. Mike Gesicki did have a big week last week. He is very sneaky. Brissett seems to look his way. A ton of targets. So I do think you can throw him out there if you are looking for a tight end. Dalton Schultz or Mike Gesicki? Big Mike Gesicki. Big Gesicki, yeah. All right. Mike Gesicki or uh, Kyle Pitts? Yeah, I'll play Ooh. Pitts. Ow. <laughs> yeah, that one is... I abstain. I think I would play, I would play Pitts. With a very depressed voice. Uh, Carson Wentz on the road here. Jonathan Taylor, you know, he's staying in your lineup. Mike is optimistic of a, yes. a breakout in this game. Mind you, he was limited with a knee injury today. So, yeah, Wednesday yesterday. rest. Knee rest, yeah, ankle rest, glu- glute rest. Michael Pittman. Uh, he's heating up. What was his stat line last week? Because I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't. I don't remember that off the top of my head. Michael Pittman was six for sixty-eight last week, but he had twelve targets. Only caught fifty percent of them. Twelve targets the last two weeks. Dolphins middle of the road so far this year, giving up thirty fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. It seems like Pittman is a flex this week, but beyond that, it's you know, Naeem Hines is a flex kind of every week right now. Mm-hmm. Marlon Mack will be inactive again, so it'll be Taylor and Hines. Uh, the over-under is not big in this one. It's 42 and a half. So I, I wouldn't be looking at – I don't think that there's a lot of explosive upside in this game, to be honest. No, the question I, – I think really the, the biggest question in this game is just Jalen Waddell. The, he had so many targets, so much forced utilization. You know he's going to touch the ball. He did nothing with it last week. But I think their their concept, if, I, if I'm putting my, you know, my galaxy brain on and saying, like, what, what were they trying to think is that – if we give the ball 12 times to Waddle 
like he is the type of player that can get the ball behind the line of scrimmage and whoop, he's yeah. gone and nobody can catch him. Um, that still exists. You know, if they do it again and give him another 10 catches, I wouldn't expect him to have 50 yards again. Certainly not. And in a PPR world. Especially if, against the Colts. If you're full PPR, he's in, right? Because yes. just the, the the baseline of those receptions. Um, in a half or a standard, I think he's in that flex play. I would rather play Michael Pittman. Over Jalen Waddle, but that's you know he's it's he's the there. Waddle after the catch that we need to see. Waddle, Waddle. We need him to go into full sprint. Yeah, we need him to waddle away. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Browns two and one. Vikings one and two. Uh, the Browns going to Minnesota. Obviously, the defense was outrageous last week for Cleveland, but I mean. I like Minnesota in this game. The DK Sportsbook line is Browns minus two on the road. Well, even with Stefanski coming back, knowing how they do things in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, the over-under is 51 and a half. Let's, regardless of who wins this game, because, I mean, even the DK Sportsbook has it as a close one, it's going to be very interesting for fantasy purposes. I mean, Dalvin Cook should be back out there. Uh, you don't bench Dalvin Cook ever. Um, and then Kirk Cousins... Jefferson, Thielen, they've been so good so far this year. You know, I was sharing with these guys on on the Green Room show yesterday, like Mike Zimmer's praise for Kirk Cousins' his leadership, Adam Thielen's praise for how he's even more in his zone right now. Like, this has been a very impressive offense, and it's really a push-comes-to-shove situation with how Cleveland's defense has been playing. It's a little bit difficult to say, hey, okay, the Browns are third against opposing running backs and six against opposing wide receivers when, you know, one third of their accumulation was the abysmal Bra uh, Bears offense last week. It's probably a little bit of an exaggeration. They're going to face a much more experienced offense this week on the road. I think this is going to be an exciting game. I like Beckham. You obviously play the wideouts on the other side of the ball. Nick Chubb's in your lineup. Kareem Hunt's in your lineup. There might not be that many question marks yeah, on who to start. It's it's an easier game. Kirk Cousins has been playing out of his mind, and I was saying it, you know, just more of a uh, with a jocular attitude. But Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins has been, you know, the last couple of years great. But if anyone knows what Kirk Cousins struggles with, I think Stefanski is going to be one of those people. Okay. So it just that'll be not that I'm I'm not benching Kirk Cousins. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying for real life football, this is going to be fascinating to watch. Who do you have in the game, Jay? I, I've got Minnesota. Um, okay. I I think that being at home, they are as you brought up yesterday. They're they're hop skipping a jump away from being three and zero. Oh. Um, and and so they're 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 a good team at home, and I think the Browns are probably going to be a little too. Um, whenever you come off the type of performance that they had last week, where you just you just humiliate a team, you dominate them so thoroughly, so easily. Uh, it, sometimes you you end up with that letdown that oh, I think it's supposed to be easy. It's not going to be easy in Minnesota. If you had to start a tight end from the game, Tyler Conklin coming off a of seven for seventy and a touchdown, or Austin Hooper. Conklin. Okay. Con con con. All right. Hooper's always a shot at a touchdown here too, and sure. obviously. Some nice high implied point totals, 26-24 in this game. The Giants at 0-3 take on the Saints at 2-1 and in New Orleans. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing a little game in here. Um, well, let's do it. I want to play a game. Oh, we're so, playing a game? Yeah, the, the DK Sportsbook line, by the way, Saints minus 7.5 at home. Over under is 42. Who would you trust holding your newborn child more? Daniel Jones or Jameis Winston? Ooh, mm, man. I, I, I think I've got to go Jameis because he's not going to throw the baby, and that's more where he turns the ball right, over. Right, right. Daniel Jones has a problem holding on to things. It's, he's a fumbler. So I'm, I'm going with Jameis here. I'm going Jameis. Okay, I think I will. Jameis will keep the baby safe, but it won't look like he is he will oh, be yeah. it will be awkward awkward he'll trip on a step he'll or say something. oh where's the baby oh oh, oh i'm holding them <laughs> uh who would you trust more to help you move so you gotta you gotta have somebody come over and help you move Jameis or uh there's no way Jameis is not breaking something 
Going through a doorway? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's going to be super I'm gonna apologetic. I'm going to take Daniel Jones. Super he's... apologetic, though. Oh, oh, man, that's my bad. Yeah, I'll buy you a new one. Yeah, he'll run into something, but Daniel Jones just, he might be walking along the grass and then fall over. I'm gonna, yeah, that's true. I think, I He's think if you're moving with the move, though, Daniel Jones you is got, quicker. You okay. got to go with the the better athlete, and they're both athletic. But Daniel Jones, much better, athlete. is a better athlete. Right. Who would you trust to win this football game? <laughs> oh, uh, Daniel Jones or Jameis Winston? Yeah, I'm Sean gonna go with Peyton. I'm gonna go with Jameis Winston yeah, in yes. this one. Um, it's funny. I mean, Winston has been by. By lack of opportunity, he's been a very efficient touchdown thrower. Now, that does not mean that I would play him in fantasy. Um, just he has a low volume, and he's been throwing. The, the, the touchdown pass he threw last week was the most Jameis Winston oh, play that, yeah. in the history of his career he because has, he had no business throwing it, and, and now he's been rewarded with a touchdown. He has changed nothing. Right. I watch these games, and whenever he's getting sacked and being pulled to the ground, he'll still be like, I can make this throw, and he'll you know, throw up the wobbler. Um, sometimes those those have been intercepted and called back on penalties. Uh, Jameis, for fantasy purposes, I know week one he was the quarterback four. He threw five touchdowns, but he has yet to hit 200 passing he's yards. He's yet to hit 150. He's yet to hit 150 <laughs> passing <laughs> yards. You Stay away from pass catchers. You cannot play uh, really anyone on the same side of the ball outside of Alvin Kamara. Agreed. Let's move on to the other side. Daniel Jones um, has not thrown an interception through 103 pass attempts, which is impressive. Good for you, Daniel. It's coming this week. His name is Marshawn Lattimore. But, uh, you know, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, they didn't practice Wednesday. They're probably not going to play. Kenny Galladay is in play just due to volume this week. I think that you are in a situation where you may you may get some smooth routes. Oh, it's been too long. Some good Kenny G. I yeah, I, I like him in this matchup. He leads the league in intermediate targets and receptions, believe it or not. And, you know, that might be where the list ends. Evan Ingram? Yeah, Evan Ingram in this game. When you know that you know they didn't game plan, obviously that was that was Evan Ingram's first game back, and then they lose Sterling Shepard and they lose Slate. It was it was kind of a hodgepodge and a mess last week in a very surprisingly low scoring game against Atlanta. Coming in this week, I think the expectation is to not have those wide receivers, and Evan Ingram just has to be a big part of this game plan. Also playing from behind, you could get some garbage time. You could, and uh, I'm I'm just gonna mention the name, and we can probably just leave it at that. Kadarius Tony, you might want to just throw him on the bench and see what happens. Wasn't it CJ Board last week that was heavily involved as well? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Both just of those guys saying that Tony will, if if Shepard is out, Kadarius Tony will likely go into the slot, and that is their first round rookie wide receiver he, like, pick as, this year. We all liked to poo-poo the pick because I. Th well, you mostly. As, I mean, I. Oh no, I was no. Yeah, Jason was was, wrong, was, man, was, was right with it. you both mostly. Yeah. Uh, the it didn't seem like the wisest use of your draft capital to select Kadarius Tony there, but that doesn't take away from the fact that he is a pretty electric athlete. He, like his quick twitch ability is is really incredible. So something could happen in this game. You know, if, I, if, but that's only if like these other guys are out. I like that, though. He has been the squeaky wheel, the first-round pick. He has been very upset about his lack of touches and involvement. So if there, was an ever, if there was ever a time to give it a shot when you're heavy underdogs on the road, like why not put the ball in his hands and see some of that return on investment in the uh, – It feels like something that Dave wants to get done. Well, then let's get it done. It's me, Dave. Dave. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Starts of the week. All right, why don't we kick it off with Jason's start of the week? Well, at quarterback, it had to be done. It had to. This is the, maybe the game of the decade. Tom Brady going back to New England. He only needs 68 Bold. yards to break. What's that? Bold. Yes, thank you. Um, well, here's here's a, <laughs> the reality is. Um, quarterback two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the quarterback two is going up against a very difficult New England matchup. They have only allowed 479 total passing yards on the season. 
Uh, if you look a little deeper, it's Jameis, it's Zach Wilson, it's Tua. Brady knows this system. This is Goat versus Owl, and Goat is going to win. Is Belichick the Owl? Yes, yeah, Belichick the, oh, is for the wisdom. Owl. Yeah, that's the that's yeah, no, the, there. That's the thing. What do you mean? That's the thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. Wait, uh, a Belichick goat? is the owl. But is a goat? But what makes an it a thing? thing? What makes it a thing is the fact that it's a known uh, for, like. I'm, I you don't, don't know what I, makes things a thing. I don't know. Like we've been doing football for a long time, and like me and Mike are looking at each other, like we don't know that's a thing. I'm still trying to figure out what is the thing. Is it that Belichick is an owl, or that with the the animal matchup of a goat versus an owl is a thing? No, it's that Belichick is the owl. Oh. yeah. Okay, that's, that's what it is. I'm just gonna accept it, and I'm gonna move on. And I'm well, it's, you've given me the courage to to play Aaron Rodgers as my start of the week this week against Pittsburgh. Uh, and look, they're toast. This team is toast. I'm sorry, they are. Um, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's toast, and yeah. they're and on the defensive side, you've seen Derek Carr go out and and have a game against them. They've given up all of their touchdowns through the air. Um, Aaron Rodgers looks like he's in an absolute groove as he's returned to form, which is form equals targeting Devonte Adams on every play. Um, they have the fifth most fancy points allowed to the wide receiver position. Aaron Rodgers needs to be in your lineup against Pittsburgh, and you need to change your mental outlook on starting players against Pittsburgh. And I'm going with Jalen Hurts, Philadelphia Eagles quarterback, for now, uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a matchup that has been working throughout the season. They're giving up over 26 points a game. Jalen Hurts was objectively bad in that matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. So bad, in fact, that he finishes the quarterback 10 of fantasy football because fantasy football is not real-life football. And Jalen Hurts will still be good for fantasy, and I like him in this matchup. At running back, I know it's been back-to-back -back bad weeks and a horrendous uh, Chicago Bears look, but David Montgomery is not going anywhere. No matter who the quarterback is, they're going to have a much better week against Detroit. Detroit is fifth in giving up fantasy points to the running back, and that is including the fact that Baltimore this last week just decided to not use their running backs. Um, David Montgomery absolutely must play, and uh, honestly, he should he should have a, a, a humongous game um, and the Bears, their only chance at, at really succeeding um, and kind of washing the ills off of what happened with Justin Fields last week is to say, let's let's establish it. Let's let's get the game going through David Montgomery. Man, they need to get some first downs. They need that to get is some helpful. First it's helpful for yardage. All right, I think Joe Mixon is going to end up the, the running back one on the week. I'm going to take Ooh. him as my start of the week against Jacksonville tonight. If you, We were talking unrealized air yards. Unrealized opportunities is an area where Joe Mix in the last couple of weeks underperformed his opportunities. Um, his work, his workload is delightful. Jacksonville's 29th against opposing fantasy running backs. Um, oh, captain, my captain, Joe Mixon tonight. And I'm calling my shot on this is where you're happy you drafted Jonathan Taylor for the Indianapolis Colts. Miami, though they're supposed to be an, a fantastic defense, they're allowing 136 rushing yards a game. That is the sixth most in the NFL. They were gouged by teams that should not score by the running back in fantasy. They were gouged by the Buffalo Bills running backs, and then the Barber just took them to the salon for a quick snip where Peyton Barber was, an, was like top five on the week. So Johnny Taylor, I'm calling it, this is the week that he scores, and you're he's back in the good graces for fantasy football. I, I love your starts because I, I really want all of them to happen. <laughs> I really want Jalen Hurts and, and Jonathan Taylor, like, well, let's go. Let's get this stuff going. Um, at wide receiver, Scary Terry, if you've been playing him, you've been mostly disappointed, had a great week two, bad week one, bad week three. Uh, Atlanta's defense looks better, but they're not. They're not good. Um, they're banged up in the secondary and they're not getting pressure on the quarterback. Heineke has been willing to air it out, has been hyper-targeting uh, Scary Terry, and I, I think Terry McLaurin has a monstrous top five wide receiver game this week. All right, wide receiver, I'm going to go with Odell Beckham Jr. Okay. Uh, the over-under, it's delightful in Minnesota. Should be a shootout. Minnesota 29th against opposing fantasy wide receivers. They're allowing a ridiculous 75% completion rate. Uh, Patrick Peterson has not made all the difference in Minnesota. 10.1 yards per attempt, both number one in the league. Beckham should have a great game and be targeted a ton. And I'm going with the stack of Jalen Hurts. I'm going with Devontae Smith. Uh, we highlighted him at the beginning of the show. 
Last week was tough in his matchup against Diggs. Uh, the rookie looked a little bit overmatched, but he's still 23% of the targets. The air yards are there. They're just, they haven't fully landed uh, just yet. There's a 54 point over under in that matchup. I think that Smith has a, a, a bounce back game. And at tight end, um, where it's always stinky, I'm going Evan Ingram. Yes. I think you can grab him, pick him up off the waivers. He is too necessary in this game. It's not the best matchup in the world against the Saints, but he had 55% of the snaps last week. 55! Oh! And with Sterling Shepard expected to miss, Darius Slayton, like the, he's going to be involved. He led the team in in targets, targets last, last year. year. So um I, I think he'll he'll have a very, very good game. And we talked about the would you play the Dalton Schultzes of the world or I, I would I would pick up Evan Ingram, the last man standing there and play him. Noah Fant Baltimore is dead last against opposing tight ends through three weeks. Noah Fant is more necessary than ever with the now uh devastating injury to KJ Hamler following the Judy injury and uh you're not gonna win on a low passing volume game against Baltimore the way you did last week. So Noah Fant, I think, is a really strong play this week. And I'm going with another streamer this week. It's Dawson Knox. Houston has given up top 10 points all three weeks to the tight end position. He's run the ninth most routes at the tight end position, and he's seeing the snaps go up. And in his last eight or so games, Dawson Knox has come through more than he has not. And I, I saw want on I want in on this Buffalo matchup. He is the one who knocks. Yes, he is. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. You wake up from your nap from last week and load the page and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll because the page was closed and um, I'm looking for my uh, boom, Wait, boom you lost your rhyme? Week. Yes, I lost. Well, here, I found it. Here we are. <laughs> Started at the top. Started at the top. Oh, let, yeah, let's run it over. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Here it is. <laughs> you wake up from your nap and you dance to Charleston because we're rolling with the Raiders, Daniel Carlson. It, that was worth the wait. Incredible. Was it? Uh, you think, Incredible. Thank you. Yes, the page would not load forever. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the snaps. <laughs> uh, running back Antonio Gibson not practicing today. Woof. Today is Thursday. I would have been happier about him missing Wednesday. Yeah, that be on I, watch tomorrow. I, I just to get, you know, emotional with our listenership. Mm -hmm. I am I have a just a swelling up of 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 frustration at this news. Be, and it just it just goes to show the value of running backs and depth at the running back position. Jason approached me earlier this week. He offered me Stephon Diggs for David Montgomery. I had Montgomery, Gibson, and Henry. I told him my first response is, I don't think I can do this deal because running back depth is too important. And then the little seed of Stephon Diggs in my head and the fact that Gibson and Henry's bye were so far away, and I said to myself, I will find myself a running back in time for those bye weeks. You better start looking. And moments later, Antonio Gibson goes potentially on the shelf. And we don't know the situation here. We don't know the situation. But he has been on the injury report yeah. every week. What we know is, though, every single week, you are not expecting Gibson to sit, but then we would all of a sudden get this confirmation later in the week. Like, oh, yeah, Antonio Gibson is playing. Like, yeah, I, I presumed he was. Why do you keep? reinforcing that he is, in fact, playing this what, week. What do you know that I don't know? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the fact that he has missed uh, a lot of practices this year and played every week should hopefully give us a little bit of comfort, obviously keep monitoring the situation. Uh, but running back injuries, man, that's 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 so huge. And the reason I offered the trade is because I lost James White and Christian McCaffrey in the same week. I had nobody. So yeah. uh, running back, stay healthy out there. I'm just a little sweatier than I was at the beginning of the show. That's all I'm saying. You know who's not sweaty? 
<laughs> oh. I, you know, I guess it's worth saying Jarrett Patterson's the backup there. So Yeah, that's true. Um, Stephon Diggs, signed jersey right now at pristineauction.com. Our great friends. Uh, it's up for 50 bucks. Ends on Tuesday night. There's a Jonathan Taylor signed Eclipse alternate speed mini helmet. 50 bucks right now. Uh, ends on Tuesday night as well. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. More matchups tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. But enjoy the game tonight. It is football time. Should be fun. We'll see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.